Hello, Luminous Beings. Reverend Joya here to help you live your best vibe. Wow, what a whirlwind this has been. And I know that um, from what I'm seeing online, what I'm hearing and listening to, so many people are going through the same thing. And it's this massive uprooting of the deepest issues that are ready to be healed. And you guys can go back and watch my previous videos about beliefs and uprooting, uprooting what's in the unconscious, that when it comes to the conscious mind, that is so it can be released, healed, cleared, accepted, loved, forgiven, whatever the process is that you need to, um, to handle for whatever that particular issue is. And when I say release, I mean, let go of the belief. It's not like you're, um, getting rid of some part of yourself. You're just deciding, you're making a decision to not uh, make this the reality from which you operate your life from anymore. And it's really powerful. And I got back from Dallas and I competed in a speaking competition. And as soon as I have my talk, I had it professionally recorded. And as soon as I get that, I'm going to be sharing it. I'm so excited. It was one of the most challenging things I've ever done to do a three minute timed talk that I'm literally being judged on and competing against other people. It's so outside of my zone of comfort. And that's one of the reasons that I did it. And in doing that process, it really helped me to hone in on um, the essence, the importance, the clarity of my story and why I do what I do and who I am. And I just want to share with, you know, in the beginning, I said, like, all of this energy is coming up to help us release what wants to be cleared. And I just want to share with you how brilliant the creator is and how the creator works because it's inside of us, right? And so this aspect of ourself, this higher version of ourself, our true self, our real self, knows exactly what we need for our growth and expansion in this moment, in this now moment with what's happening in your own life. And all you have to do is look to your own life to see and realize what the fruits of your manifestation are. Your life is your teacher. Your life is your path. It's right there in front of us, but it takes the ability to cultivate self-awareness. We have to have self-awareness in order to see it from a different perspective, to not see it through the eyes of the ego, the wounded ego, to not see it through the eyes of the outside coming in, but to see it from the eyes of I'm the creator of my reality here. So what's it teaching me? What is it wanting me to grow through? What's my expansion? What's my edge of growth? Where's the next level of deep self-love and a self-acceptance that I can get to, to help me move beyond where I'm at right now. And so when I was in Dallas, I did the competition. I came in in the top 10 across the whole United States with um, everybody who competed. So that was a huge win in itself. And then I got to compete with these 10 other fabulous women. So there were 10 of us total. So nine other women and the woman who wound up winning uh, I was actually going to leave to compete in the Toastmasters competition in Southern California. And she had come in the top 28 out of 30,000 people. So to lose to her was like, yeah, I don't mind that considering this is my first time getting on a stage and doing something like this, where it's timed, where you're judged, where it's really about, um, it's like a tiny little mini Ted talk really is what it is. And so um, the three ladies who won, that night I went to a little gathering, a little dinner, and I was talking to one of the women who won. And I said, I can't wait to hear the rest of your talk. And she said to me, oh, I can't wait to hear it either. And that comment really triggered me, triggered, triggered the crap out of me. So I actually had to leave this gathering because the trigger was so intense. And I went to my room and I just sobbed. I walked in and just started sobbing. Number one, it wasn't about her. It wasn't what she said. It was that I had spent literally a hundred hours at least working on a three minute talk. I dedicated a lot of time and energy to doing this because it was divinely directed for me to do this. Spirit was like, it's time to get on stages. I want you to do this. And so I did. And so to lose quote unquote, to a woman who didn't even know what the rest of her speech was going to be. I was just like, why did you have me do this and spend so much time doing this? And, and then I just sat with the vibration of what was there inside of me. And I was like, oh, this is the energy 
of disappointment. And this is my deepest, deepest wound. One of my deepest wounds, because when I was a child, my mom was always doing things to set me up and get me really excited just to intentionally kick it out from me. So I would be disappointed. And so this feeling of disappointment to me is, or was the most powerful uh, wound that I would protect myself from. And in order to protect myself from disappointment up until what day am I on now? Let me just check. All right. I'm on day 80. Woohoo. Today's 80 days. So, um, I'm almost to three months. You guys, this is amazing. So I am now at 80 days since I committed to stop doing the things that were causing me myself brought on by myself to experience being disappointed in myself, being ashamed of myself, being um, resentful even of myself, carrying regret toward myself. So I was manifesting all of these feelings that were all tied to disappointment in order for me to avoid feeling disappointed by others. No one can disappoint me when I'm disappointing myself. So I stopped doing that prior to this competition in Dallas. And so I get to Dallas, the disappointment feeling comes up. And I don't have anything to numb it with. And I chose to not numb it with, with anything. I could have ran to a bar. I could have done all of those things. But instead I said, no, I'm going to go sit and be with this feeling. And I just cried and cried. And it was old energy, old disappointments that came out because all of this stuff, remember, vibrationally gets stuck and stored and it lives in the body because the body is the subconscious mind. And so when I when I grieved all of this old disappointment these feelings were just really powerful and they just came up and out and free, free. And so I woke up the next morning and I opened my eyes and I immediately felt this lightness in my heart that I haven't felt in a really long time. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the beginning of freedom, the beginning of true freedom from these deeply embedded um feelings that were triggering my own behaviors to manifest and create these feelings in my life so that I could avoid feeling them from other people. I hope this makes sense to you. If you do this work, if you're doing the work, you know what I'm talking about. And so uh, since I had talked to a coach about this, who was at conference um, that I know and trust, and I went and talked to her about what I was experiencing, I also went and shared it with the woman who said that, that who said the thing that triggered me, because I don't think that, uh, well, I feel very strongly that if I'm saying something about somebody, then I'm also, it's nothing I wouldn't say to that person. And so I shared with her that I was triggered and that it wasn't even about her. It could have been anybody that triggered me because it was there ready and waiting and willing now to be healed that I've created and cultivated such a safe space of in myself, of self-trust within myself, that my conscious mind at a conscious level knew that now these feelings can come up and I can process them in a healthy way, not in a way that makes me feel like I need to run from them or numb them and self-create them myself so nobody else could do it. And I got the message very clearly when I woke up that morning, I opened my eyes and I felt this sense of freedom and I said, wow, I thought I was coming to Dallas to win this competition because spirit directed me to go and do this. And I got the message that, no, you went through this process to get over your fear of disappointment, to get over this deeply rooted wound of disappointment. And this was the process for you to actually face this fear of being judged by it, literally being judged by other people, speaking a, a very personal and, and um, heartfelt story in front of other people. So this was a really deep process for me to go through just to, not just, so I could heal the feeling of disappointment. And God said to me, and I felt it so clearly, I want you on bigger stages. You're going to be on bigger stages. But until you could clear that feeling of disappointment, the message was still about you. Ooh, boy, talk about conviction. And I just started crying, crying because my message is not about me. My message is not about me. It's I'm the one who experienced it, but the message is for other people. And until I could clear out that vibration of the fear of disappointment, there's going to be a little hook in what I'm saying. There's going to be a little hook vibrationally in what I'm sharing that is being transmitted 
through the message. I am so adamant about the transmission of frequency that comes out of our body, that comes from our words. And the words are just such a tiny part of the communication process. And we know, like in, as I was preparing to be on stage, it was really about how your visual appearance takes up so much of the space of what people judge you on unconsciously, and then your tonality. So it's not so much what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. Just like I always say, it doesn't matter what you're doing, it matters who you're being while you're doing what you're doing. And so to realize and recognize that in order to share this divine message, which is really what it is that wants to come through me, I'm the channel of it, I'm the carrier of this transmission because it's my lived experience, but in order to transmit that message coming from spirit, coming from source, through me, in me, as me, out of me, to an audience to receive, I have to get my ego, my wounded stuff out of the way in order for it to be a clean, pure transmission. And that's the gift that I was given in Dallas, which was so much more great gift, so much, much more great gift for me than winning and being on the stage. Although I am going to do it again and hopefully be on the stage next year because now I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is not about me at all. This is about showing up in the space of love, sourcing source as source as me so that I can be the divine transmitter, which I already know that's what spirit told me that I am is a divine transmitter. We all are when we hone our frequency to connect purely with our source creator, which is us. So we have this vibrational frequency within us, but we have to heal all of those infractions to the light as I talked about in another video. So this is my quick message today. Your life is your path. And when you stop reacting, right? I could have just reacted to that trigger and not healed it and still be stuck in it. Or you can choose to respond to it. You can choose to be with it. And if you remember, what do I always say? If Well, if you're new, you don't know. <laughs> but I always say the words reactor and creator have the exact same letters. And a reactor is a creator who got all mixed up. And our invitation is always to unscramble our frequency and step into creator, to step into the creator mode, to step into the divine creators that we are. That is my message for today. And as always, an invitation to join Vocalumina if you want to work on your frequency and embody your light, get your stuff out of the way and step into the magnificent expression of the divine being that you are. Join me and these other fabulous women in this community, Vocalumina, which I'm slowly building at school.com forward slash Vocalumina. And of course, reach out to me at joya at vibology.com. I wish you a blessed and beautiful day and I will see you soon. Bye.